If you're a Pinterest marketer, you've probably heard about a new Pinterest keyword tool called Pin Inspector. And I'll admit I was a little bit skeptical. Okay, I was a lot of bit skeptical about this tool because every other Pinterest keyword tool that I've ever used in the last two and a half years eventually broke after just a few weeks of using it. So it takes a lot to convince me that a tool is actually going to be useful long term. And for this one, I can officially say that I'm convinced that this tool is completely different. I've spoken with the software developer, Dave, who has been great at explaining things. And it's very much in alignment with the kind of research that I like to do, the kind that involves looking at the page source code of your pins, because that's where all the good data is hidden. So basically, this tool takes the data that is freely available on the back end of your pins and reformats it into a visual chart. So the software is not using the Pinterest API, so this will not go the way of Board Booster or anything like that. If you do decide to get this software, I'll leave my link below this video, and once you download it, follow the installation instructions that Dave gives you on the confirmation page and in your email, because it's different for Windows and Mac computers. So just follow his instructions, and he makes it really easy to get started. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let me show you a few ways I'm using this tool now in my Pinterest manager business. The first way is bulk keyword research. As you probably already know, Pinterest removed our guided search keyword bubbles that were so useful when doing keyword research. I mean, we used to be able to just copy and paste them right into our spreadsheet, but now we are left to use the drop down. And honestly, this has become painfully time consuming, especially when you're setting up an account for a client or optimizing an existing client's account and you need keyword research for like 10 to 15 boards. It's just ridiculous to try to do it manually. So I'm going to use my vegetarian recipes example from Pinterest Rank Boost. And as you can see from this spreadsheet, I got completely burnt out on the drop down suggested keyword research. So I abandoned this list. I didn't even uh, finish filling it out. So let's get the keywords for our next level one keyword, vegetarian slow cooker recipes. To get started, I'll click on the Keywords tab inside of the Pin Inspector software, and I'll type in my seed keyword, Vegetarian Slow Cooker Recipes, and select Generate. The tool will then give you all of the results from the suggested search dropdown in a nice, neat, organized list. It is the exact same as if you went to Pinterest and typed in vegetarian slow cooker recipes in the search box, and you'll see the top seven results here match the top seven results in the tool. It will then show the additional results if you were to add each letter of the alphabet after your seed keyword, and it even includes the numbers zero through nine. So this search generated 92 results, which is a lot for my purposes since I'm just using this list to optimize a board description. And what's really cool is that we can narrow it down. So let's say I only want the results from the top two positions for each search. So for example, if I type in B after the keyword and I only want those top two results because those are the most searched, I can filter out the lesser search terms underneath. So to do that, I click on the little magnifying glass next to rank and I'll select less than three and that will filter out any keyword that is not in the top one or two position. So if you want the top three keywords, you can change it to less than four, and that will add that butternut squash keyword onto the list, and you can see it right here. So this top three setting gives me 53 keywords, which is plenty, so I'll right click and go to copy, and select copy all keywords to clipboard. And then I'll go over to my keyword planner and paste them right under that level one keyword. So now I have a nice healthy list of secondary keywords and the only difference from our old list is that it's the full secondary keyword instead of just the single word that's added on to the level one. But hey, I am totally fine with that as long as I don't have to sit there and type out every single keyword manually. So let's say I wanted to add another level one keyword to this list. So I'll grab 
a keyword from the ads research that we did, and I'll copy vegetarian whole 30 to my clipboard. And when I go back to Pin Inspector, you will need to clear these results before you do another search. Otherwise, it will add the results from Vegetarian Whole30 underneath my previous results. So select clear and it will ask you to confirm. So just select yes, or you can just hit enter. I find that's much faster. I'll delete the previous keyword and I'll paste my new one and then select generate. And Vegetarian Whole30 generated 41 keywords and I think that's plenty. So I'll right click again and go to copy and select copy all keywords to clipboard and then paste them into my spreadsheet. So being able to do bulk keyword research like this has made this tool worth its weight in gold, I'm not gonna lie, because as a Pinterest manager, I create lots of boards all the time, and being able to have all of the most relevant keywords from that dropdown in a few clicks is literally priceless for me. The next section of this tool that I use is the pins tab. And underneath the first section is the search tab tab where you can paste your search phrase and hit the search button and you'll be able to analyze the pins that rank under that search term. And I want to add that you can adjust which columns you have by clicking on this columns button on the right. I actually went through and unchecked a lot of the columns and only kept the most useful ones for me. So these are the ones that I have checked and you can pause the video if you want your columns to look like mine here. And I also also have this little checkbox right here checked to wrap text in cells so I can see the descriptions for these pins kind of wrapped in the cell. So in the pin ID column, you can click on the link of any of these pins that show up and it will open up the pin inside of Pinterest. So if you want a closer look, you can go ahead and click on it. This setup allows you to skim over the titles of the top ranking pins. And this helps if you wanna look for alternative keywords to target or if you're looking for content ideas, if you're a blogger. Next, we can see the saves and the repins, which honestly, I thought that Pinterest had said that repins and saves were the same thing now but they're obviously split up in the source code, so I don't know what that means exactly, but yeah. Also, you can skim over the pin descriptions, and isn't it interesting how many of these pins have no description? I find that this often happens when a regular user saves a pin, and many times the description just doesn't get carried over. You can see if these pins have hashtags, and you can see the date that it was created. So for this search, there is a mix of 2020, 2021, and there's a few late 2019 dates thrown in there. And the next column is the method, and this is the method by which the pin was added to Pinterest. So from what I can tell, MarTech is a term for marketing technology, so it indicates a scheduler like Tailwind. And I've also seen Tailwind shown as API underscore other on my account, which I know for sure is Tailwind. There's also pin scheduling, which would be their native scheduler. But I think that all of this data is for the original pin when it was saved by the creator. And I say that because so many of these ranking copies are saved by regular users, but I honestly don't see a regular user like using the Pinterest scheduler or a third party scheduler, you know? Next, you can see the domain which speaks for itself. And you can also see if the pin is a repin. So these results are mixes of repins and fresh pins. So that's something interesting. Then you can see if it's a video pin, a story pin, and if it was pinned to a group board. You can see the username of the pinner who saved it, what board they saved it to, which is interesting. You can look at the different board names and you can even click on the board that the pin is saved to if you wanna take a closer look. If you want to analyze the images, you can adjust the image size here at the bottom and that actually helps the text wrapping as well. You can even export these results as an interactive HTML table or feed. I'll select preview to show you what those look like. Here is the HTML table version, which you can sort just like you can inside of the software. So if you want to send a client a breakdown of ranking pins or pins in their profile, you can export this file, save it to your computer and send it to them as an HTML file and they can view it in any web browser. And the other version is the HTML feed and this is the exact same information as the table, only you can see the full pin image 
and you can sort by selecting these buttons at the top. So I think it's a really neat option to have if you're a Pinterest VA, especially when we get those clients who either want us to stick to their brand colors or stick to a certain template. This is a way to easily show them like, hey, this is what is ranking in our main category. Our pins need to look more like this. A little side note for these results, I want you to keep in mind that these are the results shown when you are not logged in to Pinterest. So I do see some differences between logged in and logged out, especially when it comes to idea pins. So if you are going to analyze pins here, just keep in mind that there may be slight differences. Underneath the pins tab, you can also search by category, which I personally don't use right now because it's only the main 33 interest categories. So I'm gonna skip that one for now. And then there is the browse and scrape tab, which we're gonna come back to later in this video. I do want you to get in the habit of clearing the data when you're finished with it and you're ready to move on. So once I've cleared my data, we'll click over to the boards tab and you can paste your search phrase there and select the search button. And I'm gonna select wrap text on this tab as well. And if you find that your text is getting cut off, just increase the size of the images. That will allow you to see more of that wrapped text. For the boards tab, I left the columns pretty much as is. The only one I unchecked was topic. So the first column board ID is a link to the board. So if you click on it, you can check out the board on Pinterest. Next, you have the board name, the board followers, pin count, so that's the total number of pins on the board, the board link, which is kind of redundant since the board ID links to the board, so you can actually turn that one off if you'd like to. Next, the board category, the date last modified, or that would be the date that it was last pinned to, and then you have information about the owner of the board, including their following count and a link to their website. Okay, this is one feature that I really love about this tool. I can double click any board on this list and right click and select analyze pins for selected board. I can set the number of pins and I'll change this to 50 for this example, but you can analyze up to 250 pins at a time. Just remember the more that you analyze, the longer the extraction time will take. Once you click analyze, the software will import the pin links from that board over to the browse and scrape section under pins. So we're back under the pins tab and once those pins are loaded, you can quickly see how many of the pins are repins, how often the board is pinned to, if the board owner is using a scheduler, are there third party pins here and so on. Once you've finished analyzing the pins on this board, go ahead and clear your data, hit enter on the pop-up, and you don't have to clear the pin links on the right. Those will clear automatically, but I am OCD, so I clear them every time. So next, let's head over to the people tab. This tab is super useful for making account audits go like 10 times faster. It allows me to get information about a client or a potential client's account without having to ask a million questions that they usually don't even know the answers to. But you can also use this tab to spy on your competition, which is what we are going to do first. So if I'm building a brand new account and I have my keywords, I can type in my main keywords and see what those top ranking accounts are up to. So if we try vegetarian slow cooker recipes, okay, that's not a good example because all of these accounts have negative profile views and are not actively pinning. So let's try my main keyword for this sample account, vegetarian recipes. And that gives me way more results. And see how it just added the results after my previous search? It kind of added them on there because I didn't clear it. That's what happens when you don't clear. So let's look at the top result here. I will double click and then right click and select analyze pins for selected user. We'll keep it at 50 pins for this example. And the software will take this account's most recent 50 pins and import them into the browse and scrape section, just like it did for the board that we just analyzed. And I can pretty quickly figure out what this account's strategy is. It looks like a lot of repins and a high number of pins per day. Some with a scheduler, some manually uploaded, some video, some static. 
And I can also look at their pin designs and see which pins have the most saves. So it looks like this carrot hot dog pin has a good number of saves, but since it's a repin, we don't actually have an accurate date of when the original pin was saved. So this number of saves could be three to six months old. I mean, there's just no way to tell. But yeah, I kind of want to try a carrot hot dog now. Like what a crazy recipe. I can see why it gets a lot of saves. Anyway, so let me show you how I use the people tab to help me with account audits. So as a Pinterest manager, when you get a new client or you have a potential client, this tool has saved me so much time in that initial audit phase. So let's go back to the people tab and clear those results. And instead of a keyword in the search box, I would put my client's username here. So let's pretend that Hey Nutrition Lady is my client. So I'll paste her username here and hit search. And there's her account at the top. So I'll double click on her now and then right click and select analyze pins for selected user. For an account audit, I'll usually look at at least 100 pins or more just so I can get a clear, like full picture of the pinning habits. So the more pins you analyze, the longer the process will take, but I find that it's worth the wait. 100 pins only took about 45 seconds. And when I compare 45 seconds to how long it used to take me to check to see someone's pinning habits, you'll understand why I love this tool so much for account audits. Now I can look at her account and I can see how often the client has been pinning each day, how many repins versus fresh pins that they're adding. Are they using a scheduler? I can see this all very quickly without having to log in to their Pinterest or Tailwind account. So it's perfect for client inquiries because you can really see what their current strategy is and compare it to your own strategy and see if you can actually help them. So just to show you how much time this is saving me to figure out a client's pinning habits, I used to have to go into their account, open up the page source for their most recent pins and check that date manually. Then I would have to go into the all pins folder and I would have to compare those manually to the created tab to see how many repins they were saving in comparison to their fresh pins. So yeah, this tool has definitely paid for itself many times over. I hope this video was helpful for you, whether you're a Pinterest VA or you're a blogger or like me or both. I think this software is super useful and it's stable. I have complete confidence in it and I will leave a link below this video if you want to check it out for yourself.